the show on the road. I think we are live. Welcome back to the 2018 Canadian Lawn Bowls Championships. I'm Jake Shooknick, joined again by Ian Howard. How are you now, Ian? I'm fine, thank you. Had something to eat and uh, something to do, some cold water to drink, and it uh, makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. And we've got uh, women's pairs in front of us here once more, Ontario A versus Ontario B. Ontario A is the... Roth of Sue and Laurie, and Ontario B is Agnes and Nicole. Just for <laughs> listeners' uh, edification, uh, Sue and Laurie are not sisters, they're sister-in-laws. They've played together quite a bit, and they've done very well. I'm told that uh, Sue and Laurie went one and one, and Agnes and Nicole were... I believe O and two. I'll uh, quickly refresh no, that. Just that's to make sure. that's correct, Jake. <coughs> Once again, the shadows down there and the uh, the light. Uh, mm. I find it just a tad difficult to get a read, but I think uh, Ontario B is probably sitting shot. And as always, you can head on over to our website for results and standings. It's on bullscanada.com. A little fun fact I didn't realize, but we also have the domain right for bulls.ca. It'll redirect you to bullscanada.com, so it'll save you a few letters if you just type <laughs> bulls.ca. Uh, you got to save time. Yeah. Well, that's the reason why I go by Jake instead of Jacob, is just because when I was in grade two or three, you had to sign your name on every sheet of paper for every class, so I got lazy and shortened out a letter. I think you and I are going to be experts on this rink by the week is done here. We'll know everything there is mm -hmm. to know about rink B1. Well, it's it's. I think it's playing well by the look of it. There's a little patch in front of us that's a bit of a mm -hmm. ground under repair that uh, the players seem to be avoiding it, and that's that's a good thing. Sue decided to put something on this ball. We'll see what she does with it. I think she's through the gap. She may be a bit heavy. She through that gap too. I think she was looking to find a friend and just through. Oh, uh, I think that ball would have gone out if it hadn't hit the foot, but anyhow, it's not in the count. Uh, Agnes and Nicole are a new team. Mm. Uh, they paired up this year and they've done well. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nicole was telling me briefly uh, at the break that she's uh, really enjoying her time playing here and making it work with Agnes. Excellent. And Sue was quick on the mat. I don't even have time to switch <coughs> cameras back, so we're just going to leave it here while we watch Sue's bulls come in. Well, it looks like she's getting there. Uh, once again, probably not... A little bit too much. Yeah. Well, there's uh, the first score, and I think it went to the team of Agnes and uh, Nicole. Mm -hmm. so we'll Ontario B. And we'll just see what they do with the scoreboard. If they do anything with the scoreboard. If so they do anything. We'll see. Correct. We'll see. Nicole has come to the mat very quick as she puts the uh, jack into play. Mm-hmm. Agnes has called for just slightly over what I would call a three-quarter jack, but she only got a three-quarter jack from Nicole, so uh, that's the way it's going to be. <coughs> I 
And so uh, the score is being posted as we uh, watch the delivery from Nicole and looks like we're going to find out. Uh, All right. Ontario A is on the left and Ontario B is on the right. That is okay. what I wanted to know. Yep. Interesting, they picked up three out of that. Uh, I didn't realize they had quite as many. Uh, yeah, me neither. Well, interesting, she, uh, d Nicole delivered the bowl to where Agnes wanted the jack. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. But the jack uh, didn't quite make it, so there's a big gap in. And here comes uh, Laurie with a well-delivered bowl. Nice position. As always, if you want to get in touch with us, reach out to us on Facebook or Twitter at BCB Bowls. You can even send me an email if you have that handy. It's under Contact Us on the Bowls Canada website. Love to hear from you. Looks like Nicole has <coughs> added a little bit of weight. Two feet, yeah. maybe. Yep. Maybe a strategy coming up here. The jack will move back into the midst of her balls. Well, it's interesting that uh, respots being used this year because I don't think it ever has in the past and it hasn't come into play in either of the games we've streamed so far today. Um, I'd, I'd be curious to see if, it, if it'll come into play this game if it, and if it will throw a little bit of weight to change things up. Maybe it's my perception, but the ladies don't seem to take the drive as seriously as the men. Men <laughs> seem to want to blast as... Uh, Here's a nice bowl coming. If it's got a little bit of... Didn't quite do it. She, she'll have to make the adjustment in the next end. So a question for you, Ian. Does stuff moving behind the green bother you? Well, we've, I've talked about it. Um, I think general stuff in, in the background there's not a lot of noise and there's not a lot of confusion. I think immediate movement behind the the, uh, the head and behind the jack is is a little bit more disturbing. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess I've been for fortunate that I've experienced people running onto the the green just as I'm delivering in front of the jack and talk to their friends about the party on Saturday night or something. <laughs> Or, or in one case, a couple of people had a disagreement about, and there was a bit of pushing and shoving. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really think, in fairness to the uh, to the bowler, uh, who's uh, who's on the mat to make make the delivery. It's a bit like in golf; you 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 need to be quiet. There's a lot going on, and uh, you know, hopefully, the bowler is serious and uh, wanting to win for their team. If you're playing teams. Uh, a win for here's a nice bowl from Agnes. She's really regret. Grab the jack with her and right back yeah. to the one of Laurie's, I believe. Yeah, I think unfortunately, yes, uh, but uh, uh, it was a good bowl. So uh, to finish on your question, if we've had the train go past, that probably wouldn't bother me. Mm -hmm. But if someone is walking directly by, mm -hmm. or in the case where someone came running onto the green, mm -hmm. or I did have a guy one time in one tournament he decided he didn't want to walk around the he wanted to cut across so he cut across and <laughs> I was playing on the on the outside <laughs> ring <coughs> so um, uh, you know I, I was quite peeved uh, to experience that I thought there was a you know, better behavior um, so I learned one thing I did learn is that um, you know there will be changes the things will happen um, the um, and you you just got to move on so yeah I don't like it but uh, there's no rule that gives you a penalty shot <laughs> is there yeah I, d I, I don't think so not yet anyway I mean we yeah. could we could develop one and uh, yeah, that you can take your, sh your shot over for some reason or other Then it's interpretive, then, isn't it? If uh, you say, "Well, I want to, I want to play my shot over again," mm -hmm. uh, the opposition might say, "Well, it wasn't any big deal." Mm -hmm. And then you got to write letters to the uh, <laughs> World Bowls and wait for the reply. Yeah. So it's, but etiquette is very important in the game, Jake. Um, and I don't think 
the uh, uh, nice bowl coming up, not quite there. Um, I don't think there's uh, enough emphasis put on, you know, the etiquette of the game. There's a lot, but I think we've really got to pay attention to it. It, it, um, it creates a fairness between the, the players to, to follow the etiquette of the game. And uh, I know it's not to deal with... Uh, there's no one saying you can't walk behind the, uh, the head, but it's polite not to. Or stop if you are going to walk by. Stop if you, if you can see the line. Mm -hmm. What would you like to have happen to you? How would you like to be treated? I think I'm one of the few people where I, I don't know if it's ever really bothered me with people walking around, even if uh, you're standing two feet behind the jack and walking back and forth. It's never really bothered me, but I think I'm one of the very few where that's not a concern, but I could definitely understand how that would be distracting for other people. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like you're right that... Uh, the etiquette part is something that needs to be sort of taught, but it's not really taught anywhere. It's just sort of assumed that you pick it up as you go along. Yeah. Well, that person that ran on to the head as I'm about to bowl, and I found out, you know, I waited, waited for them to go off, and they wouldn't go off. I had to put my bowl down and go and ask, would you please leave the, the, the head? And as I was getting closer, they were talking about the party on Saturday night. It was totally inappropriate. But, you know, these things happen. I yeah, I move on, and I learn something, and uh, I don't hold anything against anybody. It's uh, you know the the impulsiveness or the excitement of the moment. Maybe that wasn't a it wasn't a major tournament. So, you know, I kind of get a life in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so uh, and holy smokes, for going this direction, both leads have picked it up here. Unbelievable! Lori isn't put it? one really well <coughs> placed, and Nicole answered fantastically. I think the, the thing that probably bothers me the most <coughs> is uh, the change of momentum in a game through somebody, um, well, it's hard to say it's deliberate, but uh, uh, taking an excess uh, bathroom break mm -hmm. um, or um, changing the, the momentum because it you know, if you're if you're on a roll, you want to stay. Yeah, there. you want to keep going. That's right. You want to keep rolling. Keep it going. You can you can change the momentum without having to have, for example, an excessive ba bathroom break, uh, or uh, you can just change it subtly. And but at the end of the day, you got to deliver the ball. Mm -hmm. You can play mm -hmm. the games all you want. And all the things can happen to you that you want. You got to suck it up, move on. A nice ball. Yeah, the, this is much tighter. Uh, yeah, much tighter uh, head here, but mm. it's going to lead. He did a couple of warm up ends, that's, that's all. Not a bad place there either. No, it's... Uh, All of these bulls are going to be useful. I was talking with Laurie uh, Roth and... Uh, Laurie was saying that she and Sue almost didn't come together to play the, uh, uh, have the opportunity to play here today. They were back and forwards and, oh, well, I'll play if you play and I'll well, you get somebody else, that's fine with me. And, uh, <laughs> and no, I couldn't find anybody else. Oh, okay, I'll play. And, uh, and next moment they're playing and uh, here they are playing for the uh, Canadian gold. That's, that's uh that's interesting because uh, they they played together in 2016. And I remember when I was out in uh, Edmonton, Alberta. That was the first time I went to a national championship with BCB and saw them there. I thought it was nice to see some uh, familiar faces that I knew from back in Ontario. And uh, that's 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 funny that they didn't uh, almost make it here. Yeah. Mm. Just because clearly they are uh, skill wise are 
more than capable enough to, to get out of the province. Correct. Okay. Well, here's a nice ball for Magnus as she picked up the jack. Oh, she went ooh close. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's hard to see the angle, but she looked like she went very, very close. But clearly the ball got through, so it mustn't be much more space than we can see. Nice delivery by Sue. It looks like she's putting something in the back. Uh, Just, just around maybe, pocket. maybe it wasn't intended to be there. Uh, maybe she was trying to come in, but really tight head. Looking at some of the other heads there. One quite a ways away from us is, uh, wow. <laughs> 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 um, looks like we're seeing... Uh, it looks like Nova Scotia and Manitoba have got a very tight head. It's nice to see uh, when the bolts are mm -hmm. uh, in that position. Oh, oh there oh, we go. There's a there's a ball. There's a result. Yes. Like what Nicole did, that she put her finger down on the ground. That's where she wants the ball. That's what I do if I if I'm in a skip position. This is exactly where I want the ball. I I don't like this business. I hear people say, "Don't leave it short," or "Don't come on this hand," or "Do this," and they're giving negative instruction. Uh, be definite. Yeah, yeah, that's that's one thing that uh, I used to do all the time when I was skipping or vicing or whatever. Is give people an option, and so you can play either hand or you know either pick it out or draw another shot or give people options and uh, I've learned quickly that that's probably one of the worst things you can do is to give an option you need to be definite and say I want yeah. you to do this exact shot because right. if you give someone an option then they're not going to make up their mind or they're going to have two options in their head or three options in their head instead of one and then it's yeah. not as easy to focus concentrate and get that shot done yeah. um, but that being said I, I used to appreciate that a lot when I was a lead um, playing for my dad that he didn't really care what I did right so yeah. that was kind of nice too but well, as a lead, you have a bit more flexibility in that department. Mm -hmm. you, you know, your you're right hand, come on your forehand or backhand. Or <coughs> the only thing I ever recall that was important one time playing a, a game with a complete novice, played six games, I said, John, just just put it on the check. <laughs> I haven't got time to tell you. <laughs> he played six games, and he played wonderful. He played extremely well. And we did. We won three games on a Saturday, really well. And Sunday we fell apart. But that's bowls. Mm -hmm. But John, uh, just uh, one instruction, put on the jack, and that's all he had to think about. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Mine can only think of one thing at a time. Keep it simple. Keep it very simple. Yeah. You know, it uh, it sometimes confounds me how long the rule book is and how many conditions of play we have. How long that document is some 50 odd pages because bowls really should just be the simplest game in the world it's really not that complicated to no. keep the dot on the inside and roll it down a patch of grass but uh, yeah. the intricacies the nuances the odd behaviors yeah and the other thing that i find uh, puzzling is that if you're if you're a student of uh, and a fan of math beautiful bowl by nicole oh, like beautiful shot uh, yeah that is classy shot um, is that the ability to bowl the same line time, bowl after bowl. No one in your way. It's very, very difficult sometimes. It's either a little heavy, a little light. What are you, what, what's going on here? It's just rolling a bowl down, uh, down a piece of grass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's a really good answer from uh, oh, Lori. Oh, oh, oh. She really challenged that uh, bowl of Nicole, and, uh, but Nicole stayed there. Shaping up to be a very good head, and one of the lessons they'll teach you once you work your way up the rankings yeah. is to uh, just get a bowl close. You don't have to be shot itself. Just give your skip something to work with. And yeah. Sometimes just being second shot, third shot is second shot so important. If you're fantastic bowl, yeah. Yeah, if you're if you're not if you if you're in a bit of trouble, getting second shots everything. Mm -hmm. Well, some people get second shot and they're a long way away, but. What we're talking about is second shot in a head like this. Yes, it, yes. it still has terrific value. Another beautiful bowl coming into this. Uh, very well played, ladies. They've clearly figured it out coming this way at this exact length. Yes, yes. 
But uh, when you were talking about rolling the same line, I remember that was one of the first drills that Lachlan taught us was to not actually have a jack, but just try to roll the same four bulls in a row. They call it the caterpillar drill. And mm -hmm. uh, I found that to be very, very simple, but also very, very important because if you can't roll the same bull four times in a row, then that's one of the things you need to practice on is just being consistent. Yeah. I go back to the conversations I had with my father, and he says, if you're going out to practice, um, don't use a jack. Mm -hmm. um, basically practice to the center line, and just do it, and do it, and do it, and at different lengths, go to the center line. Um, so everyone's got their theory, but um, you've got to quickly work out your grass, and you've got to quickly work out uh, your length, and you got to hope for a bit of luck. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be... Look, this This is a beautiful head. This is one of the better heads we've seen this afternoon, I think, Jake. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. <coughs> this is interesting. The uh, Nicole... Nicole knows what to do. She's she's been here and done that. And even though she's she's lead, she knows this shot that's got to be made. Agnes was sort of questioning, I think, there for a second, just wondering whether that's the call. But uh, yeah, unless I'm seeing anything different, playing into the pocket is usually the easiest thing because when you can rest against a ball, your weight yeah. doesn't have to be as perfect. Right. And Nicole has played at a very high level for you know for her young years. Um, She's seen a lot for her young years. You know, getting back to one of our conversations earlier about aiming, whether you pick a spot on the ditch board or somewhere on the green or what have you, I, I find it kind of odd that uh, for bowls there is no one standard set way. It should be this way. <laughs> Beautiful well, ball. Great ball there from Sue. If you can play yeah. into the pocket, why not? Um, mm. Just looking at other sports, you know, for soccer, basketball, there's a proper form or technique that... Uh, Every country, no matter what, is teaching you that here's the proper way to do it. But for bulls, there isn't exactly that one set way of you must do it this way because that's the proper way. It's still very um, different person to person, different country to country, which is just sort of odd to me. I'm, I'm surprised there's not a set one way to do almost anything in the sport, whether it's your delivery, whether it's where you're aiming, whether it's you know almost almost anything about the sport, really. Well, uh, on, on that point, it's... Um Going the next thing is that um, one of the things that uh, I've been taught is that there is a preferred way to deliver a ball. What a what a wonderful head we have in front here. These, these ladies are playing well. Well, is that the delivery is so different from boulder to boulder? But mm -hmm. I think there is a better way to do it. But the but other people make some of the most unusual deliveries work, and and you say. I don't understand. You know, I don't know. I haven't. I've seen your video, uh, Jake. A bit, and so you have more classic, what I would call more classic delivery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would say when I, when I'm not tired, I have a more classic delivery. But uh, if she hits that just the right way, she's got a. <laughs> oh, this is, might be very interesting here. He went down one. Well, that was un that was tough for whoever got the break uh, and or didn't get it. Um, that was a very good head. The um, the David Bryant um, stance from years ago. He was uh, doing it much more in a crouch position, and later on in life, I'm told he started to stand up more. Hmm. So why did you make the change? He said, well, I didn't think about it, and I just <laughs> was bowling this way, and then, uh, uh, but you take a person like David Bryant, Bryan from what I have read, and uh, the odd thing I've heard is that he could uh, probably turn his back and make the ball work. <laughs> <laughs> Close his eyes and make it work. He was an exceptional player. But, uh, some people have to work with their body uh, size and configuration. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, but there are many styles of bowling and delivering the ball. A big part of it is also green speed, too. Um, I know I had a little chat with Terry when he, he was saying that a big part of that is just sort of uh, how much quicker the greens are down under. Oh, for um, sure. A, a lot of it you can get away with just sort of uh, more of a pendulum arm swing, whereas up here, if you try to 
use the same delivery on a 9 second, 10 second green, just arm swing isn't going to get you anywhere. You need to have a little bit of body movement too. So Yeah. Um, yeah, green speed can for sure make a difference. But um, when, I, when I was talking, I think it was to you, but uh, Ireland how on their carpet being 24 seconds uh, that they have over there for one of their indoors. I'm curious how you would change your delivery to go from playing on an 11 second green to a 24 second green because I would think that if you have the same delivery it wouldn't work out that well. well. No it doesn't, no. I was up at Richmond Green and I went with my what I call my Oakville delivery because I didn't know any better and I wasn't playing much in Burlington and I came across a guy called Frank Machinta. Frank is probably one of the better bowlers that the world doesn't know about. He won't play outdoors, he only plays indoors. I think he played one or two games outdoors and he said he won them. Against, he told me who the bowlers were, very good bowlers. And uh, his delivery was really, really close to uh, Frank Donato delivery. Do you know yeah, Frank? yeah, I know Frank Donato, yeah. Frank Donato is very, very close to the, uh, the surface at the get-go. Um, and it was very quiet. The body was very quiet and the delivery was very smooth and it was more a little push because of the Richmond Green. But if you do that at Oakville, you won't get to the hog line. <laughs> so you've got to move your hand, your arm back at least uh, to your bum. Whereas in Richmond Green, you do not have to do that. You, you, you do not need that extra foot of... Mm -hmm. So you've got you to work it out. Um, pe people like uh, <laughs> Dave Anderson was on a little while ago. I remember playing a game with Dave and he was skipping. Uh, I don't know, it must have been Vice because I was in there talking in the head, talking to him about the shot. And, and the shot called for a one-inch movement of the jack. Mm -hmm. He had to touch the jack and move one inch and then we would score three or something like that. And he came in with perfect weight, moved it just the one inch, that's all. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> I look at it this way. He worked out the green, the speed of the green in Richmond, at, at Richmond Green. He, he knew it, he knows it very well. Um, what would he have done if he was playing outdoors? He would have had to have a deliver different delivery. He would, he would, he would know that. Um, and... Uh, he may not have been able to, to control the ball uh, quite as well. Um, there's a wick. Uh. So the, the, game, the game is, to me, Jake, you've been at it a lot longer than I have. To me, it's a game of adjustments. Mm -hmm. If you want to call it adjustment instead of bowls, I'd be happy with that. <laughs> 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 um, because the jack is moving, the bowls are moving, the green is changing speed. You start at one, at one speed in the morning and... Uh, we haven't had any rain here, but let's say if we had rain, we'd it'd certainly be an adjustment. To have it. So maybe it's called adjustments, and we just happen to bowl the ball. Mm -hmm. But um, it's certainly uh, a game where you you can't you can't be casual about it. I don't think. You, you, what I mean, flippant about it. You you should be careful with it if you want a good ball by Sue, and they may be sitting if they may be sitting two down. No, they may be sitting two up, I correct myself. A bit wide. Yeah, a little bit. I try not to throw too much bias into these uh, broadcasts. Um, having been a sports fan and absolutely hating it when commentators are biased one way or the other, but... Uh, Knowing all four women out here, I'll, I'll try to make comments nicely about both, but I'll start with Agnes. It is quite nice to uh, see her here, just because I remember when I was younger playing in tournaments, she'd come up to Chesley once in a while and uh, play in tournaments when she first started in her first year, second year. So it's it's kind of nice just to see someone who's oh. that you've known as soon as they start and, and progress their way up to this level. Um, I, I could make that same comment for Nicole, too. I don't know if I could say that about Sue and Laurie. I think they've both been bowling longer than I have, by, <laughs> by quite a bit, but... I don't think that uh, it hurts to make positive comments about somebody. It's uh, it's not a detrimental thing against the other player. It's just a recognition of of um, you know you're re you're respecting the what you see. Uh, I think the the favoritism is not <laughs> not part of the the commentary. 
I think, the, and I think, into that point, I think these ladies are bowling very well. Definitely one of the better head each end games yeah. that we've broadcast. That was came by out far. very weird, by far weird way of wording it, but uh, more consistent bowling. Absolutely, be interesting to see what score they post here. I, uh, I believe that was just one for Ontario A, eh? which gives them the lead to be four three after five. Well, there's a change of uh, jack length coming here. I wonder if this is planned or... Do you have a preference for jack length? Uh, overall, I, I probably a three-quarter jack length as a natural length. Mm -hmm. um, but I've often encountered people putting up a short jack, and I say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, a longer jack I find if it's hanging around the ditch area if it's been moved or something is just a little bit more challenging I, I, I don't really care but it's just a bit more challenging um, but uh, yeah the, the, the what about you? I, I love a short jack I would love to play just to the hog line I feel like that's when I'm most consistent with my draw weight but that mm -hmm. being said it's also much easier to blast it away or, or you know make some damage to it so it's easier for the other team as well um, but I'm, I'm also a big fan of pulling the mat right up and playing to the T yep and getting as close to the ditch as you can because I, I'm confident with my weight control that I'm not going to be throwing it in the ditch and yep. see that as a big advantage I, I think it is a huge advantage if you play it well I think people that don't play it well are trying to do it and they've got to practice it to learn it. Mm -hmm. I, I agree a hundred percent. But I think if you're going to move the mat up, you've got one or two things uh, going on. You do as you say, move it right up or you move it out a good length anyhow. Mm -hmm. Don't 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 move it up a few inches. That's yeah, that's, that's nonsense. Silly. Great ball there from Nicole to be absolutely right on it. Yeah. This is where we can really get into the strategic part of bulls. Um, when the heads aren't that close, it's still just a simple just draw, draw, draw. But once you actually get some close heads is when strategy really starts to make a difference. And that's something that um, I'm not sure if, if it's really taught. Um, I, I know that you can work with coaches, and coaches can teach you some strategy here and there. And a lot of it is, is learned from watching others. Um, but I think that's something that's missing from a lot of players' games. Some players can be absolutely fantastic bowlers, but just have no clue for what the proper strategy is or what their percentage shot is to play. I don't think it is taught. Uh, uh, some people have a natural, a natural game and uh, works well for them. And uh, you know, I've seen uh, see people seen evidence of that. Um, I'm a proponent if you have the, the choice and the chance, uh, if you've got nothing to do and you have a chalkboard, you should just put one on your, on your wall or in your something, the clubhouse or something. And just have a look at a dummy head and work towards it and see what you might do. Uh, because I, I come back to the, th the idea that the, your brain is... Um, if you fall in love with the game, the brain will say, okay, this is what this person wants to do, and I'm going to give it all the help I can give it. So strategy, uh, if, you, if, you, if you can't be taught it, you can maybe teach yourself. Uh, you can go on online and, and watch... Uh, YouTube. That's a. That's a. Mm -hmm. See what they're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you can. There's some instructional uh, video uh, that will tell you virtually. You can do that. You can go and buy a book, uh, or you can practice a lot. And I think you can play four, three, two, one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, not quite sure about jitneys. <laughs> <laughs> What do you feel about four, three, two, one? 
I feel like that's a great game for folks who are new to the sport. Yeah. Um, it, it hits just about every great thing about long-term athlete development of uh, modifying the scoring and allowing greater chances of success. Um, it, it has so many positive positives about it. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm a huge fan of playing it at a more competitive level just because that's just my personal preference more than anything else. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not something that I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, I guess. Um, but but it is still, I think, crucial to t when you're teaching someone new how to play the game. I think that's the f the only format you should be using, really, if you're actually going to be playing a typical Bulls game and not a modified drill or modified other game. Well, a lot of lot of clubs, because of their social mix, they're very high social bowlers, and not so much competitive and. Uh, I remember uh, Johnny Bush, you know John? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he was telling me one time that he was so uh, determined to play you know, here at such a, at a national championship and win mm -hmm. that he actually moved closer to Niagara Falls so he could play with a very good level of bowler. Mm -hmm. And he said it took a couple of years before they said hello, John. <laughs> I, I make that up a bit, but uh, you get the idea yeah, yeah. that he had to work his way into uh, a team. Mm -hmm. um, some clubs are just not that way. Uh, so if you're a competitive bowler, you've got to go find it. Here's a very nice bowl by... Oh, uh, fantastic bowl there from Magnus. That's a I beautiful think she, finish. I think she... Four. Yeah, I think she... Uh, three, anyway. Yeah, I think they're all her. Three. 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 Yeah, that was very, very well done. So, um, yeah, so if you want to aspire to something, you may have to move home. <laughs> 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 oh, she mo moved the mat back. Uh, right back to the T. Interesting. Uh, yes. Um, yes, that's very... <coughs> Well, you rolled it, you uh, put the ball near it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. I've, I've heard many a skip say that. I don't care where you put it as long as your first one's right beside it. That's right. Mm. Agnes, take your direction here. There we go. Uh, you're not bringing us uh, the uh, afternoon tea and scones. Eh? <laughs> this is Matt from Bowls Canada just came by and uh, bringing us tea and crumpets. Tea, and yes. <laughs> well, let's see what she does here. Beautiful delivery. You know, I found that to be a very interesting aspect of the game that I think is missing over at a lot of clubs over here. Uh, when I first went to Hong Kong, uh, we had oh. a couple of roll-ups at uh, local clubs there and we were playing sort of friendly matches against the local teams there because they thought it was, you know, a great chance to play against the Canadian crew. And so I think we played a 12-end <coughs> game or a 10-end game, something like that. And halfway through, they rang a bell or sounded a horn and had everybody come off the greens and have afternoon, tea, and afternoon tea, tea and cookies. Yeah, Very polite. <laughs> uh, which I thought was a very interesting twist on the game. Um, mm -hmm. Very social aspect to it that uh, if it's not a big tournament, I think that more clubs should incorporate that. It gives you more yeah. of a social environment to it. makes it a little more, yep. Uh, yep. Little more friendly. Yep. We we play. Uh, I play some. I haven't played much this year, but uh, played a few games of a league on Monday mornings at nine o'clock, and uh, they have that break mm -hmm. in the middle of the morning, and you go and have your tea and your coffee and your cookies, and uh, it's designed to to really build good interclub mm -hmm. relationships. That's mm -hmm. that's the, the principal purpose get some extra bowling but you, you're not um, you're not doing much more than having a good social morning and uh, the first time I played I, I kept score and I said wow I've got a good score here and I said who do I give it to they said oh just tear it up <laughs> I said what was that <laughs> what's that 
we played all that and we tear up the score. We might as well no, not keep the score. <laughs> Here's, an, here's another interesting bowl. It's, uh, this head is uh, still a very good head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Playing close to that three-quarter length that uh, mm -hmm. that you would enjoy. Yeah, I think this. Oh, nice bowl if she stops. No, just a bit heavy. Beautiful bowl, though. She knew what she wanted to do, and... Uh, she very much uh, came close to doing it. <laughs> Looking across some of the other scores, Jake, um, they seem to be pretty tight, and the one, the immediate ones here, mm -hmm. um, six ends. There's a can't quite see who it is. It looks Quebec versus. Um, Alberta, Alberta A, A. 6 4 for Quebec. Yeah, so they just came off the win here. Um, another score out there, it's uh, 7 5 again after 6 ends. It's Nova Scotia over Manitoba. There's uh, two uh, Saskatchewan teams playing here, and one has got the upper hand of uh, 8 to, uh, to 1 after five ends according to the scoreboard i should add that <laughs> do they change the scoreboard and if someone would like to s send us a set of binoculars we could give you the rest of the scores <laughs> <laughs> they're a bit far away and the sun is very hazy right now one of these years i'm going to remember binoculars just because every championship i come to i was like oh yeah i need to bring one of those and then i get here and say oh no i didn't bring one mm. Well, actually, these sunglasses uh, cut the glare down quite a lot. Oh, that's a great shot there from Sue. Just a little bit through the house, but great place to be. Uh, how, do you, how do you find? Do you bowl with sunglasses and hat? Yeah, I, I usually play with glasses and a hat. <laughs> uh, I always wear a hat when I play. I get uh, way too hot of a head if I don't. But uh, for sunglasses, I, I, I do when it's sunny, but when it's that in-between foggy or dark to start the day or what have you, I normally have to start or finish a game how I started. So if I didn't wear sunglasses to start the game, then I won't put them on halfway through it. Mm -hmm. I find it very difficult to uh, bowl with anything on my, on my face. I take it off and put it down and bowl. You're bowling into the sun, Ian. Well, we have to work this one out. I don't know what it is. It must be, uh, it must be uh, something from 100 years ago. Well, a nice ball here. Um, well don't that know should be enough for shot anyway. Yeah, it looks to be from here, doesn't it? Laurie's taking a good look at it and saying, yeah, one, one green ball there. Yes. Well, she's come a bit skinny, but you never know what's going to happen here. I don't mm. know if that'll be enough to make a difference, and Agnes is going to come down and take a look. Scope it out. I was disappointed that they didn't bring their dogs here. Because Agnes and Gary are both mm -hmm. here, and they have a couple of absolutely gorgeous corgis that they yep. used to bring to their tournaments. Yep. Maybe it's a long way away. <laughs> What I would uh, talking about bringing it sort of. Two of my granddaughters have got into the game, and uh, one of them is pretty keen, and she holds some promise. Um, but I forget who I was speaking with this morning. Might have been. Uh, anyhow, spoke to a lot of people. Um, <laughs> But bowlers, young people that are coming into the game need their heroes. You know, you need to say, I want to be uh, Tiger Woods if you're in golf, or you want to be uh, uh, some somebody in the sport that you're in that catches your attention and say, oh, I'd like to be as good as that person. And bringing young people here today, maybe they'll come tomorrow. Seeing all this good quality play, 
got to have an impression on you. Uh, even though we've seen some scrappy heads, we've seen some really good ones too. Mm. Uh, another, this is basically another good head down here. That one is very f way, way, way over there. Looks like Alberta and Quebec. Uh, that's 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 reasonably tight. Oh, here comes Sue Roth and her last bowl of the uh, end. Yeah, and she's put a little bit on it, I and she needs to. Will it hold up? I think she's on she's the inside. She caught one and cut them down, perhaps. Interesting ball, good ball. There's no quick decision down here by. I love that Laurie is getting right down to measure right away. Um, not yeah. looking at humming and hawing, but just saying, you know what, I don't know, let's just measure yeah. right away. Yes, yeah. So when you've um, played Jake uh, two to uh, B team, uh, how did you find uh, the uh, trials and tribulations of finding a, a bold partner for pairs or your trips team or your fours uh, teams? That's, that's a interesting question because um, I've heard a lot of. Uh, a lot of complaints coming out of certain provinces about how teams are stacked and not bringing new people into the game and whatnot. But uh, for me, I think I have a very unique perspective on that being relatively youngish. Um, so back when I was 16 and Dad finally let me join the junior circuit uh, of all the junior tournaments that were going on back in the time, mm -hmm. uh, there was probably about 16 to 20 of us that would go around and play in all 10 to 12 tournaments or however many there were at the time, and we quickly formed a tight-knit circle of, of friends mm -hmm. um, so anytime I wanted to play in a tournament it would more or less depend on location of where it is to who lived closest that I'd end up playing with on the day mm -hmm. um, but eventually a tight-knit circle um, I, I guess a few of us got closer and closer so uh, now every time I have a chance to play I'm playing with Cody in any tournament that I could play in uh, Dylan would have been another one and it's not just because they were um, passionate bowlers and, and good bowlers but it's more that I had the most fun with them so mm -hmm. even if we would have uh, lost every game it still would have been the most enjoyable time for me just because of who they were as people right. more than anything else right um, that being said though um, when we were sort of uh, I guess 18 to 20 years old in that age range um, we did tend to end up cleaning up at a lot of the local tournaments and I don't think people were we're too fond of the fact that uh, we'd go, you know, three and zero and plus sixty four score, or whatever it would have <laughs> been at the time. But um, I, I, I didn't think of it as a stacked team. I thought of it as a fun team and playing with someone who's relatively close to my age, as opposed to playing with uh, oh someone from my local club that's uh, a little bit older than me. And, and not that I don't enjoy playing with uh, people who are older than me either. But um, there, there, there was something about just playing with uh, playing with my peers that I that I enjoyed. I guess we just had a little more in common. Maybe I'm, I'm not sure. But, uh, no, that's that, no, I understand that. But if you to today uh, in your Nepean club, would you be saying, yeah. uh, "How do you how do you go?" On how would I pick a first yeah. player there? Um, I, I would probably go with whoever is the most enthusiastic. Um, there, there's something about uh, something about the enthusiasm, um, or just the happiest people, I guess, regardless of how long they've been playing for, or how good they are. I, I really don't care too much about your skill level. It's more about who I'm going to have the most fun with on the day. Um, and that's actually a big reason why I started working with the uh, the Elmdale Lawn Bowling Club. We've been working with them on developing some uh, some templates and and getting their club up and up and running a little bit more smoothly. Um, their their president and vice president are both. I, I don't know how old they are. I'd be guessing maybe in their forties. Um, but they're from the curling club and very eager, very enthusiastic. Every idea is a good idea type of personality. So yep. I absolutely love working with them because of their their positive energy, and that's. That's the type of people I want to play with, the type of people I want to surround myself with, not the uh, the negative people or the win at all cost people. I'm, I'm here to have, have fun. Uh, yeah, we all like to win, but uh, I want to make sure I'm enjoying the day too and not to going home upset with someone. Uh, we don't know who's listening, and uh, I think that's a good answer to a tough question. Uh, is that. Uh, yeah, we all like to 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 win, but uh, you got to still enjoy the game. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, it's a good answer. 
I, I guess that is totally dependent on the person <coughs> too, because what I find fun is probably different than what you find fun, and it's different what they oh find yeah, fun yeah. too. So I mean, that's uh, well, that that's part of it. Winning's fun. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> Winning's fun. <laughs> there aren't too many people who say I hate winning. <laughs> that's right. To, to be fair, though, I think that losing is actually probably one of the most valuable lessons you can learn, you and and to learn at a young age, that's actually uh, nothing wrong with that. Kind of, kind of something I actually think that we need to actually teach a little bit more to some of our younger stellar players. I'm gonna pick on my little sister as a prime example. Um, she'd go in tournaments with my dad all the time, and they'd win everything, and she'd never lost. So whenever she did, um, took it very harshly, and you know, tears would be flowing. Um, did she now? Well, she's a good bowler. I've I've seen her bowl. And yeah. But there, there's something about you have to learn how to lose. Um, oh, I, for sure. I was for sure similar when I was younger, when I was 10 years old, and ended up playing with a couple of club members who weren't uh, weren't the greatest players, and, and you know you'd suffer your 42 to nothing losses, which was <laughs> devastating as a 10 year old. But uh, you have to learn how to do that at a young age, and I think it's more important when you're younger to to deal with that. And I'm not saying you need to lose every game, but uh, to experience at least a couple. Of, uh, of very tough losses. Pro probably makes you understand that you're human, and uh, if you were here, what's happening here? This is uh, she's going to get around the corner. She didn't quite do it. Maybe she did do something here. Uh, another good ball. Yeah, it makes you human, and. Uh, appreciate that uh, other people want to win too and they do play hard and they have their day mm -hmm. oh that's unfortunate for uh, yeah. young Sue um, well, she was looking for. it was not what she was looking for but she put down a nice ball and it just didn't work however that is the game mm -hmm. you know speaking of tough losses I'm going to reminisce a little bit about when uh, when I played in Ontario Playdown uh, at Bob Cajun, a very quaint little town yep. that I've never been to uh, since. Yep, um, I know Bob Cajun well. They yeah. had, uh, I guess this would have been back, I don't know, 2010, 2011 maybe, uh, they had the Ontario Singles Playdowns, and so I was fortunate enough to get out of my district and play there, and back then was when they had the rule of if you win the end, you get the choice of whether you want yes, the jack or the yes, hammer. Yes, yes, yeah, I'm aware of that. So I ended up coming up against a guy named Ron Ginoli in my second game. Heard of him. And uh, I, I took a four the first end, and opted to take the... Uh, take the mat I think and I didn't score again for the rest of the game because he kept taking the hammer and on his very last hole he would come in and steal shot and then he would take the hammer and then next end I'd be lying and his very last bowl he'd come in and take shot so he counted uh, 21 ones in a row <laughs> which was the most frustrating game I've ever played because I didn't know what to do because when yeah. he keeps taking the hammer and I'm out of bullets, and it's always on his last bull. What do you do? So, in hindsight, I guess I probably should have tried to put the jack in the ditch or something like that to try, so that way he wouldn't have the option. But yeah, um, didn't expect him to be able to carry that on for 21 ends in a row. So I guess I was just waiting and waiting for him to miss, and he didn't. <laughs> Only on his last bull too. So that was one of the most frustrating games I've ever played, and uh, a tough loss that you had to just sort of swallow and try to move on with. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, but you know, you learn as you say, you learn something, and so there's a little bit of momentum change here for the uh, A and B team here between the two Ontario ladies mm -hmm. pairs. Um, ways to go, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you ever in your uh, early days, because your proximity, would you have played a lot of games against Ryan Bester? Yes, yes I did, quite a bit. It was impossible for us to try to get out of District 8 for a time, just because the Bester crew was uh, 
pretty much unstoppable for, for us. <laughs> we were still too new to the game and didn't, uh, didn't know how to overcome that. So, yeah, when I was growing up, I had to play against Bob, Chris, Mike, Ryan, and occasionally Ken. Um, w what's interesting is that uh, actually, well, it wasn't me, I was too young, but my older brother, um, Saturday mornings we would all go five pin bowling at uh, yes. the lanes in Walkerton there, and we were part of the YBC league or whatever it was. And, and Ryan was a part of that too, as were all the busters. So, uh, uh, saw them there occasionally, well, more than occasionally saw them there all the time, actually. And it was interesting to see um, Ryan's delivery at a five-pin lane, I guess, because uh, normally you start at the back and you sort of run up the lane as you throw, but he would stand, you know, one footstep from the foul line and just take that one step very much like a long bowling delivery would. Um, and I think that's probably why he's as good of a driver as he is, because he had this five-pin bowling uh, background where it's... Sort of like throwing a drive every time you, you, you throw your, your ball in five pin bowling. Um, Interesting. So yeah, so I uh, knew him from a, from an early age. Uh, I remember one year back when Walker didn't have that E. coli fiasco. Yep. Um, I believe the school was shut down um, for the month of June or something like that. And I was still in public school at the time. And the Lawn Bowling Club in Hanover is right beside my school. So going out at recess... Uh, I'd look over the fence and I'd see him over there practicing because, you know, he's not in school. So uh, he'd be <laughs> over there throwing drives or draws or whatever it was he was doing for practicing on the day. Um, but getting out of the district was damn near impossible because for fours it was always Ryan skipping with usually Mike at vice, Chris at second, and Bob at lead. Um, and and we'd, we'd always enter and it would just be us two, so we'd have a best two out of three. Occasionally we would end up winning a game and forcing that third game, but more often than not they would just sweep us in two. Um, and then after that, if they didn't win the provincial fours, then uh, we'd have to face them in pairs or or even singles. And it was uh, not not an easy district playdown to say the least. Despite the fact there's only ever really two teams or just two <laughs> families <laughs> duking just it out. But, uh, it out. Learned from a very early age what it took to get out of the district, which took me, I want to say, probably close to ten years before I ever finally did. That probably was as um, uh, helpful to your game as anything you could probably imagine that head-to-head -head battle you know mm -hmm. not friendly and at the same competitive mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. well i remember uh mike uh, i'd had some b back injuries and this that and the other and mm -hmm. he said perhaps you might like to play five pin there's a vacancy on the not my team but on the next team and, and so i went down and they said well have you ever played five pin before i said no <coughs> okay, you're on the team. <laughs> 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 and uh, I uh, still having back problems, and yeah, but I was getting there. And you have the handicap, of course, in five pin. Yeah. And yeah. and uh, and uh, I'm making a, a good contribution because of the handicap and doing this. And somehow or other, I did something because I was taking some steps and putting the the the, the ball down. And I felt my back go out, and uh, anyhow, I suffered that night. And uh, the next week, I came back and I did what you just said. What Ryan did, I just stood at the f at the at the line, at the line and, 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 and and just really did a lawn bowling delivery, and I was able to to manage. But after a few, I don't know, let's say four four uh, times doing that, I just said, I've got to quit. I, it's just pain too painful. So I, uh, uh, she's uh, what a shot! Uh, yeah, a beautiful ball. So um, I uh, got a young fellow in that ha had a slight disability, but good, good, uh, good ball. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'll pay for it, you know, and we'll work out the money if we win. So uh, yeah, so I, you know, okay, so I, we, I did quite well, and with my handicap, I won the, you know, the whatever it is you win made more money playing uh, five pin that season than, <laughs> than I did bowling and uh, but it's a it's a different uh, delivery mm -hmm. it, it forces you to be a little bit harder and faster for some reason or other maybe it's because you want to knock all those pins down that you've got you can't be a namby pamby person <laughs> But so I get, I get, I get that um, Ryan would have uh, 
benefit from the game. Mm -hmm. And Mike still plays, and still plays at a very good level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I wonder um, why more five-pin bowlers haven't come into... Well, here's, a, here's an interesting bowl here by Sue. A little too quick, I think. Uh, yes, it just... A little bit too fast. She just had a little bit too much on it. Um, it's, it's an interesting what's happening in this game. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to really go one way. Mm. Uh, it's uh, what I found was very uh, interesting, unique to me. I guess was for all the years that I had to face the Bester clan, um, play against them, duke against them. I don't think I ever. Well, I, I think I played with Bob in one tournament, maybe, but it wasn't until 2014. We were at a summer camp down in Florida playing against uh, Team Scotland. And that was the very first time I ever got to play with Ryan, and we played together in pairs, which I thought was just, you know what, it's about damn time. Because <laughs> I've been playing against him for who knows how many years. He's been in Australia for the past 10, but uh, growing up, it was eight years of never being able to get past him, and now I might as well team up with him. Uh, I think we ended up losing that game by like one or two, but uh, well, yeah. it was a, a good experience to finally be able to do that just because I'd been waiting so long just to yeah. be on the other side. Well, today we have... Um uh, the Ontario coach, uh, Steve McCarahan, is with us. Uh, I don't know where Steve is. He's probably in the shade somewhere. Um, or he's out. He's uh, scouting his I think he's team. Down, yeah, down over there scouting one of the teams. And uh, his daughter Kelly's also down in Australia. Yeah, uh, she's uh, also down in Australia, making quite the name for herself. I don't know if you follow the, the Australian rankings points, where if you play in specific tournaments, you get points for how well yes, you do. And yes, Australian Player of the Year. So Kelly's almost always in the top ten yes. for the past two years that she's been there. She's uh, usually even, sometimes even top five even. So she's uh, doing very, very well down, down under. Well, here's a well-weighted bowl, I think, coming in here. Mm -hmm. I think this is a dandy. I think if it just gets around, it's yes, it's a well-weighted bowl, right to the jack. Once again, these ladies aren't giving an inch, really, even though the score is uh, mm -hmm. a bit lopsided. Um, Sue and Laurie are not playing like the score. They're playing much, I think, much better yes. than the score. I, I, I could not agree more. It's not as though they're all over the place. Like They're still putting very close heads together. This yes, they are. Yeah. This other game next to us, the two Saskatchewan teams, is uh, one team, I'd <laughs> you know, the no which is the AOB, but uh, mm -hmm. it's... Um, yeah, 12 one's a little upside it up. I'm uh, yes. not sure if that's the A or the B team, though. No, I don't the Saskatchewan flag is also the same as the Saskatchewan flag on the other side. Yeah. Well, Saskatchewan's doing well. Yes, <laughs> yes. No, it's not doing well. Or you could be in the neighborhood with this one too. Yes, interesting ball. Oh, just I don't know if you saw him, but we had a guy named Josh who was standing behind us not too long ago. He's from the Canadian Center for Ethics and Sport. And he's, here, he's here to do uh, drug testing today for a few of our national team athletes, and that's oh. part of being a recognized sport. Um, every recognized sport in Canada has to go through drug testing uh, randomly through Canadian Centre for Ethics and Sport. Uh, so we're no different to that. But uh, he's here today with a, another volunteer, and he said he's never been to a lawn bowling club before, so he was very excited to see what, it, what it's like. So when he was pulling up, he was surprised to see the parking lot was full. There's so many cars, and even getting into the club was to show him where the washroom is. We <laughs> had to wait and let uh, 17 people come through the doorway, and he was just like, man, there's so many people here. And I'm like, well, yeah, it's a, it's a national championship. And so he asked me how many are here, and I said 120 people. He was mm -hmm. like, whoa, that's, that's a lot. And so he was uh, just out here not too long ago circling around the greens getting his first first glimpse of what lawn bowling looks like, which I think is, although it's only two people who've never seen it before, it's still exposure to two people who haven't seen it before. So that's 
every little bit of exposure helps. Yes. Well, on the same lines, Jake, last night at uh, the banquet uh, that was uh, to welcome the uh, players and officials and coaches, etc., to uh, to the uh, tournament, mm -hmm. I was had the pleasure of sitting next to, I believe it's, his name is Gene Mapkowski. I think yes. I pronounced it yes. correctly. He was a a rough rider. He's the minister for uh, culture and uh, recreation, and uh, and uh, he said he's not played bowls either. Mm. Uh, he's been very active with his boys playing football, and mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. he has three boys. I think he said something like seventeen, fourteen, and eleven, uh, and he does some coaching and s training for the for the. Uh, the teams that the boys are on. Oops. Oh, oh no, so that's, that's a, them. That's mm. a pretty good result there for Agnes. I wouldn't be too mm. upset with that. Uh, one thing that Sue might want to look into is throwing a little bit of weight, though, see if you can... Uh, Move into that head and take it. And even if you kill it, then you're still not down too much at, at the spot. Mm -hmm. I think she has something on this one. Whether she's got... The, she's going to hold the line here. She, well, yeah, I think she's she got it. Beautiful shot. Yeah, well, I think she's picked up uh, a few here. She might be down three or four. This is a big change of uh, mm -hmm. on this uh, down three. Well, that's very interesting. Well, well bowled by Sue Roth and uh, yeah. So uh, Minister Makowski is, uh, I think, ready to. Uh, if someone would contact him from the Regina Club, come down and at least have a uh, have a role. Yeah, Tory from. Uh, from Toronto was at a uh, function not too long ago <coughs> that I was at and uh, I'd met John before a few times and uh, I said uh, politely Mr. Mayor you, you know you've got to get out and have a game he said give me a call <laughs> uh, so there people have a high level of interest but uh, like anything you've got to drag them out a bit and say okay come out and but once they drink the Kool-Aid, they often say, how long have you been bowling? Or they might say five years, ten years, twenty years, or whatever. I wish I'd started sooner, they all say. So this is a this is a game that always finishes, well, I've been bowling X number of years, I wish I'd started sooner. Uh, and that must say a lot for the bowl, the game of bowls, I think. We have a, a listener from Stanley Park who's just asked me for some more info on the federal seniors grant that you can use to purchase equipment. It's the New Horizons grant, in case you're still yes. listening. I'll uh, send you a link to, to the website where you can find more. I'm not going to claim to be an expert on it. I don't work for the government of Canada. I, I don't know as much info as, as some. Um, but, uh, yeah, definitely take a look into that. That's $25,000 that... Uh, is a federal grant, which means it's good across Canada, so any club can apply for that. Uh, I want to say that the application window might have closed for this year, so you might have to wait until next year, but as far as I know, it's a yearly thing, so you can apply next year, the year after, and the year after that. Well, if I might say something, uh, Jake, uh, I think you're right, there may, the window for this year application may have closed, but it can always be checked. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say one thing, if you're interested in getting the grant and you you just need to pay attention filling in the application. Mm -hmm. it, it's not something you just shoot off and you know, hope for the best. You'll get rejected. You need to sit down and be thoughtful about it um, and uh, make your application. Um, if you really were struggling with it um, and you had nobody in your vicinity or no one in uh, Bowles, B.C., uh, I'm sure you could reach out to a gentleman called Ralph Ellis in mm -hmm. Ontario, uh, and uh, he would he would uh, at least direct you a little bit. Um, he's very affable. I have for sure been sending his uh, info around and about, and he's been incredibly helpful with uh, helping people apply for for the grant. He's got a collection of successful grant applications, actually, and. Uh, you can really mimic them quite well because a lot of long bowling clubs are very similar, so you don't really need to change a whole lot from Correct. successful applications. But uh, one thing that is kind of uh, fun to note, I attended a grant uh, writing seminar in Ottawa back in November, uh, and they had someone from the Ontario Trillium Foundation, someone from the Ontario government, and someone from Ottawa Parks and Rec. And they all recommended a couple of 
really grant writing tips, I guess. Um, and, and one of them was that uh, for every grant that's out there, almost every um, organization has someone who's dedicated to helping you answer questions and actually write a successful grant. So if you don't know where to begin or how to make it better or what have you, they should, almost all of them, have someone who's there that can help. So you can reach out, you can send them an email, send them a phone call, and, and ask for help. And they're, they're willing to help you because that's their job. Um, I don't think a lot of people know that. Uh, it is dependent on the organization, I suppose. But um, I if you're struggling or, or want to know, hey, oh, oh, what interesting bowl. Interesting I don't know. There from, from Nicole. I don't know where who it went to. Uh, the the jack moved. Uh, it's hidden from us here. Uh, it might be suggesting that uh, she actually improved her position down there. Mm -hmm. um, Laurie Roth had uh, Laurie had put down a wonderful bowl and challenged and was well answered by Nicole yet again. So once again, we we're looking at a very, very tight, mm -hmm. very, very high level uh, head, I would call it. Uh, these ladies are playing at, at a very, very high level. There's no question about it. Well, there's a very fortuitous result. Yes, yes. Indeed. But it has been going both ways. I can't say that uh, only one person has been hitting seven wicks every game and getting right. every result. You know, it's right. it's been uh, it's been fairly equal, I would say. I think so. Just to finish on the grants, I I don't know what goes on in British Columbia, but uh, in Ontario, the sports ministry goes through the Ministry of Culture, mm -hmm. Recreation, and Sports. Mm -hmm. Our tourism, excuse me, in sports, and they have their grants too. So there's numerous opportunities for funding uh, if you spend the time. Um. You, mi you might find seniors grants or new horizon grants or trillium grants we have in Ontario. Yeah. Uh, th 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 there's more than one <laughs> that you could maybe Tap find. Into, yeah. yeah, and they have different criteria. Yeah. Yeah, be sure to read the criteria. Uh, uh, well, another another tip from the uh, grant workshop that I was at uh, said that whenever you're applying, a lot of them ask, you know, intended outcome or what are you trying to do, sort of deal, so they can have an idea. Uh, their their biggest recommendation was don't just talk about your club, talk about your community. How is this going to impact your community at large? Because every grant provider wants to get the biggest bang for the buck. So Correct. if you can say that it is impacting your entire community they are much more likely to fund it as opposed to saying it's going to impact the 32 members at your club. Right. Uh, so even if it is, you know, specifically for your club, you can still word it nicely to say that, uh, you know, it's helping the community. Uh, it's going to help new bowlers as they come in. It's potentially going to help uh, people from, from around the area get more involved in lawn bowls. So even if you only have a membership of 30 people, you can still say it's going to impact, you know, over a hundred if you actually have people coming through the door to try it to get a new set of bowls. Absolutely correct. You don't, one of the things is just tell, tell what it is that bowls can do in your community and it's an easy say, easy thing to say. It's, uh, it benefits seniors, they get out, they socialize, it's healthy, it's uh, what, uh, what we have is an interesting uh, bowl coming up from uh, Ontario B. Skip. She is uh, probably going to play weight somehow. Something tells me. She yes, she took put a little bit on it, but not too much. She might have the line, and she might not. She's got a very interesting bowl. Well bowled. Don't know what happened down there, but. <laughs> Certainly interesting, and they got one. Maybe I don't know. But
So how many did uh, Ontario B pick up there? Did you see? I think it's only one. We'll see in a second. I, I think I saw her put uh, one finger up, but we'll... It's 15 to 7. I yeah, yeah. It's so just, just the one. I remember playing Agnes and uh, Nicole in a Premier League game at Oakville. I can't recall who won. Uh, I was just uh, I was impressed with uh, Nicole's game. If, I, if memory serves me correct, I think we won, but uh, I, you know, I stand corrected. <laughs> but um, what I was impressed with uh, Nicole was just her steadiness. Uh, um, Here's a here's a wonderful ball by Laurie. Yeah. Yeah. What's your shot here, Jake? What would you do here? I would still just be looking to draw, just draw around that last ball that you threw and get one close within you know, bit heavy. Two, two feet. Mm, mm, bit heavy. Maybe even gone. Well, she definitely adjusted her weight. It's not in the ditch. But it's a well bowled. It's well bowled. Yeah. Yeah. She's she's got her second shot, which. Uh, Is Laurie on the inside track? She's on the inside. She's at the jack. Beautiful well bowled. Yes, yeah, well bowled. Well, that Roth clan, uh, you've, you've got Jim playing in the the fours, you've got the two uh, wives, you've got Tom Roth sitting over in the spectators area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Their daughters, I think, are all from both sides of the family, are, if I'm not mistaken, are good bowlers, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. They, uh, I can't remember their names right now. They were now. in their time. Uh, let me see here. We've got uh, Michelle. Michelle and Ron, I believe Michelle stepped away from bulls this year uh, to look after the little one. Um, now let me think of the other name here. Oh, Aaron. Aaron, Aaron, okay. Aaron is the other one. Yeah. Wow, that took me way too long to remember the name on that one. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I excuse me? <laughs> I haven't heard from her in a little while, actually. Oh, say, say it again. You're back. Oh, this is very close from Agnes. Very close. Very close. Just uh, outside. The um, the head once again is uh, this is quite a strong. Mm -hmm. Just crashing on that short pull there. Where's he go? Oh, it's gone. I do find that very useful, the way Nicole has her foot off to the side, because when there's stuff in front and you can't even see the jack, then uh, to have that foot can be very useful just to, to know how close you need to get, which is really not that close. From from the mat, you think you have to be much closer than you really need to be. Mm. <laughs> Would have changed that head. Uh, if, it was if pretty much the same bowl twice there that Agnes just mm -hmm. threw. Sue is on the inside track here and gets a very fortuitous oh. result. 
Yes, but that'll yeah. make things a little different now for uh, Agnes. If she throws that same bowl again, I think she might get a different result. And if she doesn't, um, the, they say, as they say in cards, it's tightening. It's tightening. You know, cards is such an interesting revenue potential for clubs that I don't think many are taking advantage of. I have like a, a bingo night. To have know? a bingo night, to have a euchre night, to have a what have you. Um, but that's a potential where you can either rent out your clubhouse to an external card group, or better yet, you can even get your club members involved to have a card day or what have you during the winter if your club can manage it, and if not, even during the summer too. Uh, but there are so many opportunities for clubs to to better utilize their club, I guess. There are way too many clubs in Canada that are just sitting empty for the better portion of a day where I think that you could be using it, whether it's too hot, whether it's raining, or, or what have you. There's still so many opportunities that you can uh, utilize your club, and it doesn't even really matter how glamorous your clubhouse is. It doesn't take much to set up a game of poker or euchre or any card game you want. All you really need is a table and a chair. Like, it's not... Uh, no, you're right. Uh, our club uh, uh, used to do a lot more of that many years ago, I'm told, and became a good bonding... Mm -hmm situation for many of the bowlers and uh, they've started up again um, and uh, it went from I don't know, eight people I think wanting to play I think they're up to about 20 wanting to play now oh nice and that's in the short space of uh, less than well I'm going to let's say uh, four weeks uh, and the club is earning uh, revenue from it and they intend to now carry it through the winter, even if they'll go to another location and the club will still earn revenue. I, I picked up a lot of good ideas when I was at Broad Beach. Uh, they, had, they have trivia night every Thursday night, yep. and they have a live band come in every Friday night to play music. And, and I was thinking, you know, a lot of these ideas clubs back home could be doing too. It doesn't take much to have a trivia night. And to find some local college band or what have you, they wouldn't charge much to come in and, and play whatever songs you request because it gets them exposure, gets them practice, what have you. So it might not be the best band in the world, but it's still still something. Yeah, if, you, if your club can uh, is winterized or something like that, or mm -hmm. you have the space, uh, some clubs have a pretty tiny. Uh, some clubs I can recall are so tiny that they're lucky they can get their members in. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be curious what it would be like to have a live band come in and play some songs while you're playing a Thursday night jitney or what have you. No you problem. Know, I think it'd be great. Speakers mm -hmm. out. And you uh, attend it? Have you done uh, uh, Lawn Summer Nights? Yeah, yeah. I did Lawn Summer Nights the very first time I was up in Ottawa back in 2016, and that was a very, very unique experience. I'm, I'm shocked at how well it's doing, given that uh, cystic fibrosis has... Um, I don't want to say no ties with us, but uh, they, they really run it on their own. Like, we're not uh, involved in, in any way, and yet it just seems to grow and grow and grow. They're just filling a void that we could have gone to many other charities that need mm -hmm. and that are closer tied to our demographics. The Lawn Summer Nights in uh, Leaside, they do have a, uh, music. They don't have mm -hmm. a band, but they have mm -hmm. the music playing. Mm -hmm. It's a festive occasion in the the outfits of some of the the uh, particularly the ladies of course they're, they're really uh, very imaginative and the men uh, they dressed up uh, kind of cool and you know modern clothing and mm. casual clothing and and uh, they're supported by a, a brewery a, a Toronto brewery uh, and uh, they have some food and uh, they, they sell out uh, mm -hmm. Uh, within hours of the going online, people mm -hmm. are waiting for it. It's a bit like that Brits uh, pub in uh, Minneapolis. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, they've got leagues, and that's all they do. They only play four nights. Mm -hmm. um, but the the Leaside Club earns whatever they earn, you know, a couple of thousand dollars. It helps defray costs, keeps uh, membership fees down. I think you make a good point. We should be doing more of this kind of thing. I would just love to see clubs make a little bit more money so they can actually do a little bit more instead of having to squeak by each year and just cover costs. I'd love to see clubs actually build up enough funds so that they can 
you know, five years, ten years down the line, say, hey, let's go dig up our greens, make a brand new one because we have a hundred thousand saved up for it because we're actually a, pro a profitable endeavor. Or let's go build a brand new clubhouse because ours has fallen apart and we've saved up for the past ten years and we have half a million that we can do that. But in order to do that, you have to actually make money, which is a, a mindset that most clubs, regardless of the province, regardless of where you're located, most clubs are very much just, uh, we like things the way they are. We're not here to make a profit. We're here to right. roll bowls. And that's a, 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 whole, a totally different mindset. That I'm not sure if I'll be able to convince many people to start thinking of, I, I guess it really is more of a business at that point if you're trying to make some money. But that's not... Uh, not well, the point. It's more just so that your club can actually survive and thrive and actually get with the times, I guess. We haven't been able to work out which uh, is the A team and the B team for... We have to pay attention because one team on this next rink is, is running away with the game. Mm -hmm. I, don't know which, I don't know which... Saskatchewan team is which it's a bit confused. Um, other other games are looking pretty close. <laughs> As fate would have it, um, when we were trying to remember the the Roth girls or Roth girls, uh, their names, and I was having a Tough time remembering Erin. She's she's actually listening right now uh, too, and just said, "Hey, hi, Erin. How, how dare you forget my name? <laughs> how dare?" <laughs> wow. but, uh, yeah. That's uh, that's right. Her and Craig had a little one last year as well. I I, I didn't forget about that, but I, I figured that might have been the reason why they they've taken a a brief hiatus from bowls to look after yep. the the youngster. So give it another year or two, and I'm sure that uh, we'll have a nice little yes. little tyke out and about on the green. I don't know what that signal indicated. It's three going one way or the other. <laughs> you know, when in doubt, uh, sometimes Agnes, you sh maybe you should visit the head. Yep. I think she's a little quick. Yes, I think so. Through. I don't know. There was a signal from Laurie that the four. This is going to be a dramatic change of. Uh, on the momentum, at least. We'll see what happens here. Uh, that, uh, might almost be enough to get in there. I'm not sure. And Agnes will come down and take a look now, just to see yeah. what's what. Again, this has been another well played mm -hmm. end by both teams. Well, uh, there's a fair bit of weight coming in here. It's a bit off line, so it must indicate that the B team is down. No more bowls left on this end. Uh, only one. That's interesting. I got so uh, Sue and Laurie uh, picked up one on that, uh, chipping away at the lead of Agnes and Nicole. So 601 here in Regina. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if uh, fatigue is going to be a factor for any of these players here, because this is the first time we've been playing three games a day. Uh, we did shorten the time limit down to two and a half instead of three. So 
in theory, it's only an hour and a half more pulling, but it can still make for a very long day. Yep. Uh, the current temperature here is 30 degrees. So, sun hasn't dropped very much. I'm curious if shadows will start to take a toll as the sun starts to drop a little bit more in the next uh, two, three ends here. Uh, well played bowl. Both bowls are well played, it's just that one's just inside the other. This is this is an extremely good answer from Laurie. Fantastic uh, bowl that should be shot right on the jack. Yes, well bowled. It's gonna run out of steam, I think. A bit short. Yep. Don't know if Lori's here. She's coming around the corner. Just around. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Great shot there too. Yes, that's that's good bowling. Big picture, big, uh, so Nicole may come in with some weight. What do you think, Jake? I don't think so. I think she's just looking to get another one close. She might be a, t a foot or two through, but I don't think she's looking to play. Oh, not heavy, but just into the head and disturb it, perhaps? Up on her last. Oh, that's a Interesting. pretty good result, to be honest. I mean, I yes. she's still down one, but that changes well, she, up some angles. She might have been down two before. Mm -hmm. And as you say, the angles have changed here. But, but the only thing I don't like about this head is all of them are short, so it makes it a heck of a lot more difficult now for the skips to get in and do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you're Sue or whether you're Agnes, it doesn't matter. It's still not going to be easy to get in there without making a a bigger target for your opponent to get in now, too. Perhaps do you think the first bowl by either one, whether it's Sue or Agnes, has got to open that up a bit? I don't know if Sue would want to open it up Sue as he's lying one right now, but um, for sure I would expect Agnes to play some weight in here, and Sue is probably looking to just get some protection and yep, going right back to the right back to the back. Hmm. Well, here's Agnes now. It's, uh so that's much more conservative weight than I would have expected, but there might be a port there that she sees that I don't, that she's looking to just squeak through, I'm not sure. This is a thoughtful ball, a thoughtful position. The tricky thing right now for Sue is to not get greedy, but you also want to capitalize on how many points you can get, because she's down five, but they're is still another four ends to go. So she might just be happy with the one. And that certainly did not help Agnes's cause. I think she could <coughs> almost be two there now. So Sue more or less just played away from everything and said, mm -hmm. I don't want to clear anything up and just mm -hmm. make life difficult for you. So Agnes is going to have to get some some good results here if she's going to get shot out of this. I'm not even sure what I would be trying to play for here if I were Agnes. Uh, the way this is set up right now. Cole's calling for some weight onto her short her short bowl there. Try to roll it over one or two. I 
I think if she can salvage uh, the end by from the look of the head to me, it's just come in and grab one bowl and the one that was just knocked in a moment ago and maybe you have to lose one. You, you got to be careful you don't move that jack too much around. Thinks a little on me. Oh, here comes the ball. It's coming into the head. Yeah, inside. Oh, yeah. So that looks like uh, two down. Well, these Roth girls certainly have a lot of uh, a lot of grit to stay with it. It looked like it was going to be dark times for a little while there, but they're clawing their way back, sticking around. That's true. They narrow the gap quite considerably. Mm -hmm. So it's now down to Agnes and Nicole to dig deep. That can sometimes be a very tricky thing once you've been rolling well for so long to try to power through the last four ends. I find the last four ends can sometimes be the most difficult four. Something about going up and back, up and back. Do you ever find yourself having a problem with nerves going into the <laughs> last little bit of a game? Not really. Not really. How about you? I, I've definitely been victim to that in a singles game. I've seen myself look at the scoreboard and think I just need two more and then be stuck on 19 and end up losing the game because I couldn't get over that hump. Um, but no. I think that's more of a psychological thing more so than nerves. It's not that I'm nervous, it's just that I'm uh, now I'm focusing on the score rather than bowling well. No, I don't. I don't want to be blasé and say, you know, it's not... I, I have... I had one shot that I had to make in a... in a district tournament that... Uh, then in Milton and... I, I, let's put it this way, it wasn't so much nerves, but... it just felt... Um, well, maybe you could call it nerves. I just had to make the shot and... Uh, I kind of feel more that I don't want to let my teammate down or teammates down. I, I, I feel that pressure. Uh, perhaps that's why I like playing singles. I just got myself to blame or thank. Um, whoa, what a well bold. Laurie is really picking it up here. That's back to back. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, she's playing very well. Yes, that uh, that shot that I had to make in Milton, the, the the jack was about an inch from the ditch, and uh, I had to stop on the jack, and I did, but the momentum of the bowl just had something inside it, and it just flopped over. Um, I wasn't disappointed. It was a hell of a tough shot, and it, if the you know it's so close, it could have stayed up. But uh, I, d I felt a lot of uh, I gotta make this shot for the for the team kind of thing. But you I just think, Jake, that uh, you just do the best you can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think through my career I've had situations that uh, some people would never experience at a very young age, and I just had to just had to deal with them <laughs> and uh, uh, it teaches you a lot if you're under pressure situations and you've got to make decisions under pressure so it's uh, okay it's another another thing to do just a job just a game <laughs> yeah that's right that's right but that's I don't right. like I don't want to let somebody down They're there doing the best they can, I expect. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they're hoping that I'm going to do the best I can. So no sense in being nervous or fidgety or fiddly. This will be an interesting bowl. It'll be a bit behind. It'll be a nice position for them if they...
That's I think probably, they, yeah, a really good place to be, I think. I think they called for that. Um, and now uh, Agnes and Nicole are going to strategize here a little bit about what to do, because you don't want to be giving up a three at this stage in the game. Correct, correct. But I think there's still enough room there. You can easily draw that off, um, unless that hand is just really not playable. It looks like it's not... Uh, not the most difficult draw shot in the world. You still have well over a foot. But it means you have to have your weight control down really well. I will say that when you're playing skip in a fours game, I find that very difficult because... Um, skip and vice, I guess, really anything on the back end. Because there are a lot of times where you don't actually get to throw a draw bowl until you know, halfway through the game. Uh, and, and by that point, when you're asked to draw a shot to cut your team down, you know, from down six to down one or something like that, it can be very difficult to do when you haven't actually had a chance to, to draw for the past four, five, six ends in a row. Right. Uh, but in pairs, that's really not the case. Um, I'd say almost every end you get a chance to throw a draw bowl in pairs because there's just, uh, you get more bowls and there's not as much junk in front for you have to plow through. Yeah, sometimes I feel you've got to break the, the great wall down and um, Agnes is putting a slightly different line on this one. It could be a very good line for her. Too quick with that line. Uh, yes, I think. I think so too. It's um Yes, it was just a bit too much there. It implies that she's down. But do you think the count is more than one? Jay? I think it's definitely more than one. I think it's a definite two for Laurie. It could be even more, maybe even three or maybe three. Well, this game over here that uh, was something, you know, 16 to 1 and 16 to 3 now. Yeah, this is a good ball by Agnes. Not, still too no, wide. Still too, she just need to tighten that up. So uh, it should be there's one. one for sure. I think she's going to measure from there. Two Kick for sure. Two. Two. Just two. Yes, well, that's tight. It's a, it's a good uh, show of um, digging deep by Sue and Laurie. They were against the ropes, and uh, they've got the game within reach. Uh, mm -hmm. yes, so this will be a down-to-the-wire game again, which is I always good to see. Yes, it is. Nobody really likes a blowout. Well, it's uh, hard to imagine that there's they're both playing so so well that either one of them is going to, <laughs> unless they do a seven, eight, or nine, or whatever you do. <laughs> 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 what you said earlier. Not unlikely, but also not likely. So if you could place the perfect first ball, where would you place it? The perfect first ball? Mm -hmm. As a lead lead ball? Yeah, yeah. The very first ball, where would where do you want it? Well I'd I'd rather have it uh sitting behind the jack. Right behind the jack. I, I think I agree with you on that. I've heard some people say they want it directly in front of it because that way uh, you can't see it and that way it's gonna go with it wherever the jack goes if you end up crash on the bowl, but no. uh, I think I also like it directly behind. I, uh, I, I don't mind when, for some reason or other, my lead does it, or I'm playing lead and I, I do it. Mm -hmm. But I, I've seen so often that the jack flops behind it, it can win an end. A, a bowl in front is a big target compared to that little target psychologically. Yeah, this is just me. No, oh, yeah, I, I agree with you on that. I think I like it. Uh, I like it behind. Yeah. 
This end is a little different setup from the last end, except Nicole is trying to make it what it was the last end tight, or the last two ends or three ends tight, where these ladies have been playing with pinpoint accuracy by and large. Well, that's a very good response uh, there from Laurie. What a wonderful, wonderful ball. And she gets the flop note that she that's might. The flop, but that does make a nice juicy target here for Nicole. When I see a shot like that, I absolutely lick my lips when I'm on the map because now it's such a bigger target for you to just rest that ball, grab the jack. You can play a little bit more aggressive now, just a foot or two through. Mm -hmm. I think that's exactly what Nicole was trying to do and just got a little wide. Yeah, I, in my one of my earlier games, I came across Ryan Stadnick and I had a similar... Two, my two bowls were there, mm. and then I actually had a third one. And Ryan picked up his bowl and turned to me and said, "Sorry, Ian," <laughs> and he put down a, a beautiful bowl and took me out. Mm -hmm. Instead of going him going down three, I, he went up two because of the way he clipped the jack. So you got to be careful of the big bowl, and the big target. I still uh, still think I owe Ryan one. <laughs> <laughs> Another another wonderful ball by. You know what I would like to really see done. I, I've heard that uh, long balls can be used as sort of concussion recovery for patients who uh, have received a concussion to help them ease them back into sport. But I would love to see what this uh, would do for people with uh, memory loss or Alzheimer's or something like that. Because without fail, no matter who you run into, every lawn bowler in the world is able to tell you a story about from 10 years back when they were playing a very specific end or a very specific game and their memory is very precise. Yeah, uh, you can see it. Yeah, e <laughs> every lawn bowler can do that. I feel there has to be something about this game that... Uh, well, there is. I, th I think... Get your memory. I, uh, I think you and I should sit down and, uh, uh, with a cup of coffee over dinner and talk about it because I think you're so correct. <coughs> Uh, the way the brain works in the rain. The brain sees sees patterns, it remembers patterns, it, it wants it wants to please you. Um, uh, it remembers a pattern and when it sees the pattern it wants to replicate the performance. Um, uh, so you might be onto something uh, that I've been thinking about. Um, When people come to the head, they're coming to the head to see something, but I think they're coming down to see the pattern. Have I seen this before? If you've seen it before, mm -hmm. you know the shot to make. If, you're, if, you've, if you have Alzheimer's, it's a little bit difficult. There's a, I play in the league as a result of uh, a fellow who had Alzheimer's, and his wife said, would I take his position? And Ted was, in, when he was playing, was a wonderful bowler, but now... He was doing well for a while, and now he just can't do it because he's got other issues attached to it. Uh, but it's interesting, in the early stages, the bowl, uh, it's like a fellow I know, he used to have uh, Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. He couldn't, which way, he couldn't walk up the stairs, but he could walk down the stairs normally. Okay. Uh, he, co he couldn't walk on the street properly, but he could drive a car properly. Hmm. The motor skills are somehow in the brain. So, to your point, uh, very possibly, we need to do more research in this area. Does exercise, exercise and, and thinking together, not, not separately, but together is very potent mm -hmm. in terms of mental health. Uh, and that's what we have here, isn't it? We have exercise and thinking and strategizing and <coughs> excuse me well that Lori Roth is uh, on the jack again and she just kicked it to the side but uh, another world of a little bold so Nicole has to come in and uh, answer that one And she just may well have done that. I'm not quite sure. That's not a terrible bowl either. I That's think she. I think much in the ballpark. That shot itself. Yes, I think she. Uh, she made a go of that.
while we're watching this wonderful game here, the the uh, two Ontario teams, Jake, oh, I'm sure we're missing a lot of other wonderful games. <laughs> um, there, uh, there's a lot of good bowlers here today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good shot there, too. Yes, it is. Yes. The old saying is, the lead goes, so goes the game. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. kicking, might kick in. But Laurie is... Well, what a good Just ball coming inside. up here. Oh, she just... Well, she might have gone shot. That's, that's not bad at all. Well, um, interesting. A Agnes called for... A through the head. I'm not quite sure why she did that, but wants a little more position maybe. Wants to leave things open for her, doesn't want a short ball. Well they've got their own strategies and their own signals. I don't know if that's what she called for, but you can't be too upset with that. That's, <laughs> that's right, that's right. I remember we were playing a very strategic game in in uh, novice uh, district in my playing pairs and my, no my teammate and I we worked out calls we wouldn't give signals 49 27 <laughs> <laughs> if someone said Gee, what does that mean I said I have no idea he said yeah I notice you don't give the same number every time <laughs> <laughs> but we wanted to make fun of it oh I don't know about you but I got a little cramp these these chairs are a little hard. Yeah, a little a little stiff, and um, that's a beautiful. Whoa, ball what a zoo. beautiful ball! Yes. yes. If uh, we had a, a tape, do we happen to have a tape of this? Uh? I'm not entirely sure if I've, I, I know I'm recording this, but where it records two on this iPad, I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to see if I can figure that out and get it posted to YouTube later. Well, the thought is is that these ladies are playing such wonderful balls. They'll, they'll for sure want to watch it later. Well, they would, and anyone else that's interested in good bowling is. We'll spend the time and uh, for uh, for some motivation. I think uh, Grant Wilkie from Saskatchewan pulled me aside here today and said, uh, "Hey, I was watching the gold medal match that you streamed last year in Victoria, um, and it was their triples team." And he said, "I guess I was a little bit biased on my commentating, and uh, w wasn't the kindest, I guess, to some of the shot selections that they made. And I guess I was a little blunt, but uh, I found that interesting that uh, he was watching that game because I sure as heck haven't watched it since." And, <laughs> I guess might have been using that for motivation going into the week, uh, just to sort of realize, hey, we were in the gold medal game last year in triples, we can for sure do this in fours, and uh, here's what it took to win the gold medal game. And I thought that's kind of kind of interesting then, that uh, anybody yeah. that's looking to repeat or who's coming back again, you can go back and, and uh, see what you did well or what you didn't do well and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and improve on that. Well, my, my dad in his day taught um, at a, a, a college. Uh, they decided to teach... Uh, coaching and coach people and teach people bowls and they videotaped many many sessions mm -hmm. uh, of the individual bowler and to and uh, I can't remember hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kids went through this program over a number of years except they didn't go through it when the surf was up <laughs> surf was up no one was in class uh, he lived on the Gold Coast in Australia, not probably only within seven to ten miles of Broad Beach Club, if anyone knows where the Broad Beach Club is. Mm. Inland, not out in the <laughs> <I would> say. <laughs> And uh, he, he played uh, many clubs around there, and, uh, and that's really probably the capital of bowls in Australia. May you know, may even get the title one day of capital of bowls in the world. It's certainly a mecca for. Um, people that want to play because they the greens are good and there's an interesting bowl well, that's Inter a very good result well she was down two what do you think she's now cut down or just an interesting result it's uh, I, I think she's cut it down but i could be wrong on that can you see on that screen yeah i can see the screen here a little bit but it's uh, too far away still for me to tell it's okay yeah laurie's saying it's one so one up down one up for the roths roth still line one there well, <coughs> the sitting tide um, is prudence uh, the best result here. 
Agnes has one ball. What do you do? It's going behind. And Agnes decides to walk to the head to see what's going on here. And While the shadows are getting longer, they're not really going to affect play, I don't think, Jake. There's not enough... Unless you've got to get out of the stand out of the head and, and have your. But other than that, there's not a lot of. <coughs> what a change of uh, fortunes here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't remember who I was talking to. Uh, I don't know if it was last week or two weeks ago, but. Uh, they were saying how uh, when you play a short game, the the skill required to figure out the green um, becomes that much more potent, um, and, and that it is a skill to figure out the line, the weight, what have you, within the Correct. first two ends. But when you play a long game like this of 18 ends, that skill is almost, I wouldn't say meaningless, but it's not nearly as important You're because right. you can... If you don't have that skill, it almost doesn't matter. You can figure it out halfway through the game or, or eventually get it and... And still do fine. Um, so a good ball to uh, salvage the end there. Absolutely great ball there. Yes, uh, I think you're uh, you're you're totally correct. Um, you're it's like when we play Premier League. You've got nine end sets, two nine end sets. You've got to get going from the get going. Mm, yes. <laughs> you, you, yes. You're not. He goes that cramp again. Um, you're not allowed to uh, sort of uh, muck around. You you've got to get on with it. Whereas if you have the extra ends, you, you've got some flexibility and patience we might win you the game. But in uh, a lot of club games are shorter these days. I think it's because of the age of the average age of bowlers mm -hmm. in, in many clubs. Mm -hmm. And uh, they... Uh <coughs> Excuse me. What do you prefer? Eight um, 18 ends, first to 21, 10 ends, <laughs> two nine sets, tie breaks. Uh. Uh, that's it. That's interesting because uh, back when I w when I was still playing, I enjoyed a good long game. Um, mostly because when it's first 21 points, I knew I could dispatch with them quickly, and it would only end up being a 13 end game, which isn't that long anyway. But uh, I, I think now that I've sort of stepped back from bowling for a couple of years, I think I would enjoy shorter games much more. Um, last year at Woba, they had five or six games of ten ends each or eight ends each or something like that and each game flew by quickly but it was still a heck of a lot of bowling in a day and I actually really enjoyed that I think I uh, I think I'd much rather play more games of fewer ends th rather than fewer games of more ends I guess well you know it's uh, interesting I played the, the PBA the other day and it was first to 21 and and we had <coughs> There it goes again. <laughs> uh, we played 22 ends. Okay. That's 22 good. ends to... Before I got... Uh, before Mr. Pickering decided to pick me. <laughs> off the off the, s off the green and uh, got his... Uh, I think he got two in the last end, so he got 23 or something. Mm. Or 20 no, he got 22, that's right. And... Um, 22 ends was rather long, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I hear they've gone longer than that. And what a what a wonderful bowl this is coming in here now. Yeah, it's a great shot from Laurie, and she definitely needs it as they're down two coming home here, and Agnes is up two. And uh, these are the two ladies that, <laughs> the two uh, Sue and Laurie were possibly not going to be playing here and <laughs> and what they're doing here th is very good. Now here's a question for you because uh, since Agnes picked up two on the last end she's up two going home. Would you rather be, uh, how do I want to phrase this, um, down one with the hammer going home or up one without the hammer? I'm, I'm fine with it. Down one with the hammer or up one without the hammer? Mm -hmm. That blink and hammer on the last uh, end is... Uh, it's a vital tool. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I'd rather be up five and not worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
Yes, uh, in the last, the, the, how many games have been won on the last end of the last ball? I, I say probably fewer than people make out because the game is one or lost somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. And all you're seeing is the last ball or the last shot is just the result of what took place somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I know that's, that's a reality, or that was the last ball or the last end, and, that, and that's what happened. But somewhere along the line, there was something going on. And uh, ideally, you won't get yourself into that position that someone be pips you at the post. But, but it does happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but when it does, uh, you shake hands, walk off. The three bowls that Lori's strung together here are just absolutely beautiful. Aren't all they? in a line, two in front, one behind. Oh, it's just beautiful bowling, yes. Not a bad answer there from uh, Agnes, just a bit through the head. Uh, if she'd just had a little bit less weight, she would have been pretty much uh, at least in a cut-down position. If this were an earlier end, I would be tempted if I were Agnes to throw weight at that because you've got the three backest bowls. Correct. But given that you're up two coming home, you really only need to draw a second shot. Yeah, uh, this is uh, controlling the uh, the game now. Mm -hmm. I, I, am I right in your thinking that mm -hmm. you control what's going on? Don't don't get smart. Don't get uh, uh, greedy. Definitely don't need to force anything here. Right. Just this control this game and much better ball here from Agnes. That oh, is a beautiful that, shot. that is a nice ball. Excellent shot. Excellent. That's a game-winning shot. Doesn't need a whole lot of connection here, though, so it just needs to tap that. Yes. That's going to pop, and you're going to be lying two, which is a tie. Depending on how it goes, you might get three. And I think she's got something going here. Ooh. <laughs> wow, what a wonderful bowl, and uh, she still owned. has one more. So now if you're Agnes, I think you need to draw outside and around to where well, the about What pop. about a mini block in here? I wouldn't, I wouldn't play a block because I hate blocks, but... Uh, I can understand why some people would want to. I think that's exactly Sorry. what Nicole's calling for as a block. But I would much rather um, protect where you can protect. And where the jack could pop right now, if you have a bull over there waiting, that would more or less sort of pooch Sue's chances. Whereas if you throw a block, Sue can still get a fortuitous result with it. Yeah, I, I, I think that if it were me, I, I, I'm quite comfortable with my what I've missed, but I'm... Not, af not afraid to put a block in, but I would put it beyond her shoe, mm -hmm. so that if it moves, it's just lucky to turn it over. But mm -hmm. you don't want to turn it over. Mm -hmm. If you turn that jack over... Yeah, I, th I think you're right if you're playing a block. I think that where Nicole's foot is is a little mm -hmm. bit too close. That's yeah. not going to really make yeah. a whole lot of difference. Right. Um, I did see one thing a couple of years ago at the NAC. Um, a guy named, I think it's Charlie Herbert from the USA. Loves to play short bowls and throws them the bare minimum length that you have to throw a bowl, which is, I can't remember how far it is, like 20 feet or something like that. Um, so he has been called on that before down in the States, and ooh, that bowl just fell over. That's uh, very, very different. A lot of measure now. Very different now. But that changes everything about how Sue can play this. Yep. Um, but yeah, throwing a s ultra short bowl I thought was a very interesting tactic that I've never seen before. Um, I, I guess it increases the odds of being hit the closer it is to the mat. Another thing that I sometimes wonder, Jake, is you know, we're sitting here having the, the privilege of being watching, able to watch this game and make comments between ourselves, and is that just how do you take this this game to other people because it is a high caliber game I think you know it's uh, these both both teams are uh, they're playing their hearts out and uh, this is this is quite something going on here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hope it's recorded somewhere <laughs> having seen it once I'm not quite sure you want to go and watch it again it's like a movie do you want to yeah, say do you want to see the same movie twice that's <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. That's right. but for somebody who hasn't seen it what a nice bowl coming up here Ooh. Whoa. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. gosh she was close I, I think that's the uh, that's uh, the game well that's uh, uh so i think yeah i think they picked up one there to make it 1815 and that is that. Well, thank you for commentating with me again, Ian. Oh, Jake, it's a pleasure. It's uh, 
I learned something. I learned something last time. And we will be back again tomorrow morning at, I believe it's 9 a.m., uh, whether or not it's B1 or B6, I'm not sure yet, but we will post it on our Facebook as soon as we can. Um, we'll see you then. Yep, thank you, and uh, everyone, thanks for watching.